Hello and welcome to my second video. So in the first one, I showed you my balaclava, not baklava, because that's a dish, but that's for another time. Um, today I will be showing you my AAP01. So in case you don't know what an AAP01 is, it's a pistol made by the Action Army Company, which you probably do know. They made a pistol that is based on the Ruger 22, that's its real counterpart. It costs in Europe, uh, European uh, market, it's like 80 euros, so it's barely anything for what it is. Out of the box, it shoots 40 meters easily. It's pretty much dead on accurate. If you change like the barrel and the bucking or or the hub uh, just the bucking then you're already getting crazy results uh, it's the gas efficiency on it is insane uh, i mean it took the market by storm which you probably already noticed if you don't know the pistol you don't but it's because it's such a popular product the aftermarket for it exploded so there's like a thousand parts for it you can make a dmr from it which you can also do with other pistols but because this one is so popular there's more kits for it so you can make a dmr you can uh get different uppers uh the sky is the limit of, of what you can do with it so what I wanted to do now was go through the changes I made to my AAP-01. So it's almost finalized. So I'll go through the outside first. I attached an ASTEC Brighter C. So this is just a green tracer. I was struggling between this one and the Bifrost, but the Bifrost was a bit too bulky for a pistol. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, the Bifrost. I'm just saying for this particular replica, it didn't match for me. So I went with the brighter C. The upper, as you can notice, is different. It's the Mamba upper. This one is by Action Army itself. It comes in two versions. The contoured part here is textured or not textured like this one so that this is the b version the a version has texturing here that's the only difference so as you can see with the mamba upper you have rails here and here the only downside that most people find about this upper is it makes the pistol a lot bulkier than its original version but that doesn't matter for me that's pure personal preference it's not the original upper is not bad it's just what you want out of the AAP-01 there's plenty more other uppers you can choose if this one is not to your liking so that's pretty much what you can see of changes to the outside um, I could maybe also show you the trigger. As you can see, it's not standard anymore. So the normal trigger came about around here, but then you had a lot of pre-travel. So what pre-travel means is if you pull the trigger, it's the distance to when you touch your trigger and where you can feel it engaging. That's pre-travel. Then you have uh, the, uh, I'll call it aft-travel, but it's the wrong word. Uh, that's the point between when, it, when you can feel it catching and the moment it fires. That's the other distance you can change. So this trigger changes both of those distances. You have triggers that only change pre-travel but this one changes both to make for a very short trigger which i will show you now so your racket and then you just like that 
You can make it even shorter, but this is short enough for me. So apart from that, that's pretty much all you can see differently on the outside. On the inside, I changed quite a lot. Not that much, but quite a lot. I didn't go too much overboard with it. Maybe it's best if I show you this difference. So as you know, this is a green gas pistol. So you have the green gas, then you have red gas, and then you have the black one, which is also known as the forbidden gas, which generally destroys most pistols that aren't up to the task strong enough. So I used green gas, but the problem I had with green gas was a filling. So green gas isn't bad or anything. I'm not gonna go around saying you shouldn't go green gas or whatever. I'm just saying for me personally, it didn't work out with the filling and the handling with my wrists. So I decided to go for HPA. So if you don't know HPA, the difference is green gas, as you can tell, is a gas. So it's a mixture of butane and pro propane. And then the red and black one is, is a variation in the consistency of each mixture. HPA is just compressed air. Generally, it's around 3000 PSI or 300 bars, depending on which unit you calculate in. And it just propels the BBs into the pistol as a, on the same principle as the gas. So on functionality sake, nothing changes. The pistol still works the same way. The only difference is you can screw this up pretty high on the regulator but then you might destroy your pistol and also make it dangerous. So there's rules to abide to that you don't go over a certain pressure because then your FPS is also a lot higher. The benefit of the main benefit of HPA over green gas is a consistency. So this doesn't suffer this is the, the only part uh, I do apologize for the HPA system. This is just the adapter that allows HPA to drive the pistol. The main benefit, as I said, is consistency. So it doesn't suffer from cold temperatures. So the shots will be pretty, will be point on every time. So it doesn't vary because of the cooldown effect, because with gas, it, as the, the faster you shoot, the more it cool downs, the more the FPS drops and stuff like that. This doesn't have it. The only downside, the biggest downside is why people don't use it is, well, the look is one thing. You have this hanging on combined with this. There's uh, two versions. This is the, M4 version, which I will show you. And you also have an MP5 version, but most adapters are M4. The other thing is it's expensive. This adapter alone is 100 euros. Then you have the regulator, which is depending on which one you get is another 160. And then the bottle is 50. So by the time you're started, you already have like quite a lot invested in it. So it's not really better than green gas. It's what do you want out of it? So you have to decide for yourself, is it worth for me spending that much? Then you go to HPA. If not, there's nothing wrong with green gas. So to show you what it will look like, Take the adapter. Why like not? So it re it re uh, it also uh, it uh, sorry it always comes unassembled. So you have to put your own mag onto it. I used for this one the 
proprietary mag, but I'm actually selling this adapter because I'm getting another one. I'll explain that in a second. And then you put in your, and then it looks something like this. So it's a bit ridiculous. That's why most people don't like this because it's supposed to be a pistol. But for me, it doesn't matter. For me, it makes my life a lot easier for my arthritis and stuff like that. So I don't mind what it looks like. If it looks, if people think it looks ridiculous, then it looks ridiculous. So what I wanted to say about the adapter is I'm getting rid of this one. So most adapters go like this. So the Mac sticks in like that. The adapter I'm getting, maybe you know it, is a Monk Customs. So this part is angled towards the back. So then the mag, this mag, will stick in, stick in like that. So it's pointing to the back, which makes going lower a lot easier for competition purposes. That's what the Monk adapter is mainly advertised for. But I personally just want it for A, it looks better, which is, I think, what most of our stuff is about. Uh, and also just the fact that it's pointing backwards will make it a lot easier for me. So that's pretty much the outside. I wanted to show this one first. Then I'll show the inside. So you rack it first, then you lift it half way. The store showed me. Let me see if I can do it properly this time. I should have practiced this before I took it apart on the video. But then you can see it's genuine, a genuine video. So what I replaced on the inside, obviously the trigger, which is partially inside and the hammer. So the original hammer is a steel hammer, which has a tendency to, uh, sorry, aluminum, aluminum hammer, aluminum, aluminum, whatever, which has the tendency to break. So I went for the cow cow steel hammer because it's, this one goes, through a lot of punishment in any pistol and is the weak, weakest point on these pistols. Pretty much if you replace that and the barrel and the hop, you're set. You don't have to go as far as I did. So that's the changes to the lower part. The benefit of this lower part is that it's Glock based. So you can, so you can use most of the Glock based mags and any Glock, other Glock based accessories for this lower part. This way I can show you a bit of the... So the normal hop in the stock version is a Tokyo Marui based hop. It's nice. You don't really have to change it. I purely changed it for ease of use. So what I did was I changed it for the Action Army CNC rotary hop with this selector wheel so it's easier for me to turn it up turn it down instead of the wheel which is very stiff so that's a positive thing on the stock one but i still couldn't move it and i didn't have a positive feedback on where what i was changing so that's my personal problem other people might not have it but you don't really need to change it. It's purely, again, a personal choice. I also changed the hop rubber for a maple leaf Autobot, 70 degrees, which you can't see, but it's in there, trust me. The other part I changed was the inner barrel, which you yet again can't see, but it's uh, as long as the stock one, so it's 139 millimeters. But this one is a dual bore. So what does dual bore mean? It means that the width of the bore towards the tip of the pistol is wider 
then the width of the barrel closer to the hop. Why did they do that? Because when the BB is around here, it actually doesn't really touch the barrel. It's already taken flight. So there's no point, according to the philosophy behind the barrel, to make to keep it as tight. So it flares open at the end like a bit of a trumpet. This way, any dirt that comes in through the front doesn't affect the BB's flight path. So there's less chance of clogging, blockage, stuff like that. So that's why they call it a dual bore, because it has two different bores at the at either end, and also a wide bore because of the trumpet flange at the end. Apart from that, this is the stock nozzle. I wanted to change it, but after researching a bit, the stock one didn't really the, the aftermarket one didn't really give any benefit over the stock one and a penny saved is always good. Then the blowback unit is also stock. You can get another blowback unit from Cow Cow, like the hammer, but the problem with this upper is that it doesn't work with the aftermarket Cow Cow blowback unit. So again, that's why the stock one is in it. I changed the charging handle, but then I changed it back because I just didn't like the look of it. So you can put like uh, extended charging handles on it with an external switch so you don't have to pull it open. Here is a selector switch for in the stock one. So normally to change it, you have to pull it open and then you can push the switch to either side. So you have to pull it like that and you have to push it down or push it up to select auto or semi. Or if you don't want to do that, just leave it on semi or buy the semi-automatic version, which doesn't have the selector, but just a block in place so that you can only go semi-automatic. But I, as I said, I removed the charging handle because I just didn't, it became a bit too ridiculous for me. So that's why I just left it stuck again. So let's see if the assembly goes a bit easier. There we go. And then we push that in. And it's on again. And then we pull the hammer so that it isn't cocked. And that's pretty much all the changes I did to my AAP-01. I doubt I'll be making more changes. I think I'll just use it for a while now. Except, of course, the adapter, which will be coming with a different mag because the proprietary mags on it aren't that grand. But apart from that, this is pretty much how it will look. Maybe I'll change a bit of the aesthetics. But that's pretty much it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. So I'll turn it around so you can see it like that. So if there's any questions you have, feel free to ask me stuff that you don't understand or follow-up questions, anything, just DM me and I'll reply to you as soon as I can. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.